They used to be museum curiosities, but now they walk, blink, and remember your name. These are China's newest humanoid wives that are practical, affordable, and literally everywhere. Ready to meet them? Let's dive in. The global moment, why everyone suddenly wants a robot companion. The weirdest part about the companion robot boom is that it didn't start with loneliness, tech obsession, or even sci-fi hype. It started with math. Countries ran the numbers and realized they were sliding into the same problem at the same time. Not enough people, too many responsibilities, and zero backup plan. Birth rates dropping. Elderly populations exploding. Caregivers stretched thin. Single-person homes becoming the new default instead of the exception. Put all of that together, and you suddenly understand why machines like China's robot wives aren't just trending, they're filling gaps. Entire societies can't cover anymore. And every region has its own flavor. Japan makes calm, soft-spoken design built to ease anxiety. Europe builds plug-and-play companions that you can customize like furniture. Russia chases expressive realism, the kind that raises eyebrows when you see the jawline move. The US focuses on emotional AI and long-term conversational memory. And China? China goes for realism at scale. Smooth silicone skin, natural eye tracking, social interaction models that run locally, and a price tag low enough for middle-class buyers. That's how you turn a niche gadget into a mainstream household product. The tech is evolving faster than people realize, too. Modern companion robots don't just blink. They time their blinks based on your movement. They shift their gaze when you pause. They modulate their voice based on tone detection. The uncanny valley is shrinking because the AI isn't just reacting, it's anticipating. And that raises a question people weren't expecting to face this soon. What happens when a robot doesn't just help with chores, but starts shaping someone's daily emotional life? That's the real story behind the trend. These machines aren't about novelty. They're stepping into spaces where human presence is missing, and they're doing it faster than anyone predicted. And once we start looking at China's lineup in the next chapters, the scale of what's coming becomes a lot clearer. K-Day. Care first, hype later. If you want to understand why companion robots could be more consequential than social media or streaming, start with Kaide. OpenCare Labs built Kaide to solve a very specific problem. Keep vulnerable people safe and connected without making families sleepwalk into caregiver burnout. She isn't flashy. She doesn't pretend to be your soulmate. She's intentionally designed to be quietly useful, and that's what makes her dangerous in the market dangerously effective. Kaide stands 165 centimeters, uses a soft exterior, and runs an efficient sensor suite depth cameras for fall detection, thermal sensors for night monitoring, and voice interfaces tuned for elderly speech patterns. The product decisions are instructive. Rather than chase expensive humanoid gait, Katie's team prioritized robust fall detection algorithms and low-latency emergency alerts. So, when someone trips, Kaide recognizes the signature body motion, checks for unresponsiveness, and sends an actionable alert with location metadata to family or a medical responder, all without the user pressing a button. Battery life matters here. Kaede promises to 72 hours in realistic modes, meaning fewer disruptions for recharging. Maintenance is modular, swappable arms, clip-on tactile skin patches, and replaceable batteries design choices made with long-term ownership in mind. Price is another big piece at $899. Kaede is priced to scale into community centers, assisted living facilities, and even municipal health programs. That's the deliberate strategy. Make caregiving robotics affordable so public systems can adopt them cheaply and at scale. But the social behavior is key. Kaide integrates with telemedicine platforms and scheduling ecosystems. She can start a call with a distant family member, cue reminders for meds, and even play short, personalized audio stories. Her conversational model is conservative task-focused with soft affect because in caregiving, wrong emotional output is worse than no emotion at all. That caution is a design ethic. Help first, charm second. So, what does a family do when Kaede reduces their anxiety but also reduces caregiving labor? The answer folds into ethics and economics. Kaede promises more time, less stress, and safer elders, but that means the emotional labor of caregiving gets partially outsourced. That trade-off won't be decided by engineers alone. Momoka and the art of quiet presence. Switch gears. Momoka from Japan isn't a tool. She's an experience. At first glance, she reads like high-end design 158 centimeters, skin that warms under touch, and emotion profile tuned to human micro-behaviors, but that description undersells what she does. Momoka is engineered to shift a room's emotional tone. She's the living sculpture version of companionship. Her makers, Hanitech, produce very few units a year by design. Each Momoka is customized. Haircut, voice inflection, micro-expression presets. That's not marketing theater, it's core product philosophy. These robots are curated to be intimate objects, not mass appliances. 
Why? Japanese culture has a long history of valuing crafted, minimalistic presence. Momoka's value proposition exploits that cultural sensibility. The robot's worth is experienced over time, not in specs. Technically, Momoka uses a hybrid control stack. Low-latency on-device controllers handle gaze, subtle head tilts, and chest micro-movements designed to mimic breathing cadence. Higher-level models manage conversational context and long-term memory. The effect is uncanny but gentle. Momoka will track your eyes, give an appropriately delayed smile, and modulate voice in a way that feels responsive, not robotic. The crucial design constraint is safety through subtlety. Momoka isn't built to lift heavy weights or manipulate kitchenware, she's built to be soothing. That affects hardware choices, soft actuators and shoulders, limited torque joints, and a center of gravity profile that keeps her stable in close quarters. These choices intentionally reduce risk while increasing believability. Momoka's pricing nearly $15,000 places her in the collectible art category. Buyers expect hands-on onboarding, software updates, and a human concierge service. That aftercare matters. Emotional robots degrade not just mechanically but morally if they aren't maintained. A Momoka that stops blinking correctly breaks the experience. If someone purchases a Momoka as art, do they own an object or a social agent? The answer affects licensing, resale, and even legal personhood debates. For now, Momoka sits in the middle ground, an engineered presence meant to soothe, curated like a sculpture, and sold with the expectation of ongoing human support. Sylvia, Europe's everyday companion that doesn't break the bank. Now, let's swing to Europe, because Sylvia is basically the opposite of Japan's boutique approach. She's not rare, not limited, not treated like a museum piece she's built to be owned, used, and thrown into real daily life without anxiety. At 170 centimeters, lightweight carbon silicone shell, and a price tag of around $3,499. Sylvia feels like the moment smartphones stopped being luxury toys and suddenly became for everyone. Her biggest trick is the modular system. You can literally change her look the way you change clothes on a game avatar. Skin tone panels, hairstyles, even facial aesthetics are snap-on, snap-off. It's wild because it means you're not locked into one version forever. Want a different vibe for a different season? Swap the panels. Want something more home-friendly on weekdays and more expressive on weekends? Swap the modules. Sylvia is the first companion robot that openly embraces the idea of personalization through variety instead of deep emotional simulation. But the real reason she took off in Europe is simple practicality. She has long battery life, up to 48 hours active, and her features lean toward daily functional, reminders, entertainment control, smart home linking, translation modules, movement routines, and simple interactions that never cross the uncanny line. People love that she isn't pretending to be almost human. She's friendly, efficient, and customizable without drama. And here's something many people overlook. Sylvia's software isn't trying to imitate human emotion. It's trying to make your routine smoother, less guesswork, fewer emotional glitches, more predictable outcomes. That's a big deal for people who don't want their robot acting like a moody character from a visual novel. But here's the real question that keeps popping up online. If robots like Sylvia keep getting cheaper and more adaptable, what happens when people start treating them like appliances? except shaped like people. Does the emotional weight disappear or do owners eventually bond anyway? Sylvia makes that line blur in the most everyday, practical, almost casual way. And that's exactly why she's spreading fast. Hoshiko, the Japanese push toward hyper-real detail. Now jump back to Japan because Hoshiko hits a completely different lane. Hyper-realism, elegance, and craftsmanship so detailed that even robotics experts stop and stare. She's built by Bright Future Robotics, a company that treats realism like a competitive sport. And Hoshiko is their flagship proof that looking human is no longer a fantasy. It's a technical milestone. Her body is built around an internal skeleton designed to move smoothly, not robotically. Not full-range athletic movement, but enough natural posture shifts seated positions, and limb gestures to avoid the stiff, doll stance most humanoids fall into. Then there's the skin, top-tier silicone, warm to the touch, soft in the right places, slightly firmer in others. Bright Future didn't just sculpt a face, they engineered textures, cheeks, palms, shoulders. Everything is tuned for believability. And customization goes deep. Buyers choose facial structure variants, hair types, eye color, even the emotional profile that dictates how Hoshiko reacts to small talk laughter, or quiet environments. It's not emotional intelligence in the sci-fi sense. It's more like carefully curated emotional cues that feel comforting rather than uncanny. Hoshiko lands at around $11,500, and each unit ships with a long-term service plan. Why? 
Because the company knows one mechanical glitch in a hyperreal robot destroys the whole illusion, these machines are not just sold, they're maintained like luxury watches. But here's the thought that hits people once they see her in motion. If Hoshiko is this convincing in 2027, what happens by 2032? The skin tech alone is evolving faster than smartphone camera sensors did in the 2010 seconds. Combine that with better micro motors and onboard emotional models, and the line between robot companion and living presence gets razor thin. And the big question people quietly ask is simple. Are robots supposed to look this real? Or is Japan simply accelerating society toward a future where comfort and realism matter more than philosophical discomfort? China's ex-robots, the giants pushing into a different territory. Now here's where things get spicy. China's ex-robots is the company people keep bringing up in tech circles, not because they make the most robots, but because they make the scariest good ones. Their exhibition in Shanghai basically broke the internet. People walked in expecting stiff mannequins and walked out questioning whether half the lineup could legally vote. The skin work is insanely realistic, not good cosplay wig. Realistic, we're talking pores, micro wrinkles, natural oil sheen, and subtly shifting expression lines. The robots smile, blink, glance sideways, and even lock onto your gaze with the kind of timing that makes you instinctively step back. It's not a gimmick. They use computer vision pipelines that track your eye movement in real time and adjust expression within milliseconds. And it's not just about looks. X-Robots is actively building emotional models and conversational systems designed to interpret tone, sentiment, and small behavioral cues. Think of it as early-stage empathy modeling. The goal isn't full consciousness, it's convincing responsiveness. Robots that understand when you're stressed, when you're excited, or when you're just rambling about your day. This is why their long-term plan is ambitious. Robots that work in homes, hospitals, service counters, care facilities, and eventually public-facing roles. And because China has scale, real scale, the cost curve could plummet. That's what freaks out Western analysts. If China can mass-produce humanoids like smartphones, the global market shifts overnight. But the question nobody can shake is this. What happens when strangers start seeing these robots in malls or clinics and genuinely hesitate even for a second about whether they're looking at a person? Does society treat them like tools? Assistants? Something in between? X-Robots is forcing that conversation faster than anyone else and the speed is what shocks experts. They're not building prototypes, they're building the future supply chain of human-like machines. Megumi, Dasha, and the New Wave. Now, let's wrap this with the trio that really shows how different cultures are shaping this future. China's Megumi, Russia's Dasha, and the U, S, born Ami. Three robots, three agendas, and each one says something wild about where this industry is heading. Megumi is China's answer to a demographic crisis, tens of millions more men than women, and a growing loneliness epidemic. She's soft silicone, customizable from hair to complexion, and built to be both companion and helper. Wealthier buyers can add smart home integration, internet-enabled chat, and command-based assistance. But the deeper angle is this. Megumi is framed not as a toy, but as a social solution to loneliness and aging. That tells you everything about China's priorities. Meanwhile, Dasha from Russia sits on the opposite end of the spectrum. Ultra-realistic face work, over 600 micro-expressions, and a personality profile built for friendly service roles. She debuted as a cafe cashier, greeting customers, chatting casually, remembering returning guests, and people were shocked at how natural she felt. But she costs about $170,000, which pushes her into the elite commercial category rather than home use. Then you have Ami from the U, S, built by Abyss Creations, the same people known for hyper-realistic dolls. Ami stands out because her head unit is basically an early emotional AI lab. She remembers birthdays, favorite foods, personal details, and can talk about entertainment, share jokes, and build consistent conversational rapport. People are surprised by how realistically she tracks eye contact testers literally said it felt like she was watching them think. Put all three together and you see the bigger trend. These robots aren't just appliances, they're emotional interfaces, tools that blend memory, presence, physical realism, and daily functionality. And here's the question to linger on. If machines become increasingly warm, attentive, and dependable, what parts of human companionship stay uniquely human and what parts slowly drift toward automation. Because, based on everything we've seen across Japan, China, Europe, Russia, and the U.S., that future isn't decades away. It's already being shipped, customized, and pre-ordered right now.